This Kursk invasion scenario is getting out of hand, and there's some things you should know about it regarding the current risk level, as well as some of your preparedness requirements based on what's happening there. And of course, Ukraine's Kursk offensive started on August 6th, and since that time, it's estimated that they control over a thousand square kilometers of land inside of Russia, including 70 settlements there. And the West is seen as being responsible for making this possible. So before we get into the details, I want to mention that Midway USA is the biggest supporter of the channel. And thanks to them, I can get out here, zero an optic on my m Performance Center 10 millimeter and see if it can actually hold up to the recoil. So a big thanks to Midway USA for supporting what I do here. Ah, now, I Russia is currently blaming MI6 on actually coordinating the attack with Ukrainian forces. And of course, that's a British intelligence agency. And Ukraine themselves are crediting the United States for providing the weaponry required to be able to make the progress they currently have, especially regarding the HIMARS systems, which is the high mobility artillery rocket systems. Now, not only do we have finger pointing and we have accreditation going to the U.S. when it comes to the West being involved here, but we also have a new situation coming up where logistics are actually slowing the Ukrainian advance. They're having issues keeping their supply lines well maintained. So now we have the West calling for allowance for long range systems to be able to be used by the Ukrainian forces to reach inside of Russian territory even deeper than what they're currently capable of. And this is being pushed by the West. So you should be aware of the fact that those who have an investment in seeing these wars continually perpetuate are pushing the agenda that we should do even more there. And especially people like John Hardy, who's the deputy director of the Russian program at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy said, if the US had given the green light on attackums, which are army tactical missile systems, their use on Russian territory that is, I think the British and perhaps the French would have followed suit with their cruise missiles they have supplied to Ukraine. So not only do we see escalation occurring in the sense of the West being blamed for this current invasion scenario within Russia, and of course this is the first time Russian land has been invaded in decades, but we also have people on the outside from the West promoting the use of even longer range and even more devastating weaponry in the area. Now Russia's response is being considered to be slow. And the reason for that is, well, a lot of different things probably, but one thing that I want to bring to your attention regarding preparedness and your planning for if something like this were to ever happen in our area, is that it's harder to reclaim your own territory once it's lost. Russia can't just bomb the settlements within that Kursk region right now indiscriminately, right? They can't just go in there and destroy infrastructure or else they'll lose public and local support. So you can't just go through with drones and missile strikes and regain all the territory in the same fashion that you're doing in Ukraine right now, or if you were in an invasion scenario in another country, right? So once you lose your territory, it's much harder to reclaim because you have a vested interest in maintaining its possibility of existing thereafter, right? Keep that in mind for your own preparedness planning and strategies based on whether or not you were to lose your area to some sort of entity, right? Whether or not that is a gang of some sort, or if that's FEMA or whoever it is, right? These are things you should be considering right now. It's gonna be a lot harder to get it back once you lose it. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that this is gonna require boots on the ground. Since they can't use missile strikes and drone strikes and everything else that they're used to being able to use right now, if they want to reclaim their territory, they're going to have to go back in there with boots on the ground and actually start clearing it out mile by mile, right? Or I guess kilometer by kilometer. Either way, another thing for you to consider in case we ever find ourselves in a similar scenario. Now, another issue for why this is such a slow response from Russia's side is because they're not really sure what Ukraine's goals are in the region. But there are some things we could think about for why they're doing this. Of course, first off, they have the morale boost that's coming along with it, right? They've had a lot of setbacks recently in the sense of defending their own front lines. So they've opened up this new front inside of Russian territory where they're having a lot of success and that helps boost morale and increase positivity about the overall offensive and everything else related to it. The other thing is that there's a good chance they're in there in order to capture POWs, right? So once they're in there, they can start capturing Russian soldiers who can then be used as leverage for trade scenarios regarding their own POWs that have been captured by Russia. So these are issues that are likely a reason for why they're doing what they're doing right now. And another one is to garner more Western support. And that one seems to be working in the sense of we have people now 
promoting the concept of using Attackum systems rather than just the HIMAR systems, which have gotten to them to the point where they are right now. That's why this whole thing's getting out of hand. It's getting out of control. I mean, we're, we're just moving right into World War territory in the sense of it being public and obvious to the masses, right? For those of you who have been in this community for a long time, I'm sure you're operating under the assumption that we're already in this wartime scenario, especially with things like this happening, right? But not everybody's aware of that yet, so those people are going to be in for a rude awakening very soon. Now, another thing that's happening because of this entire incursion, right, is there's a huge refugee crisis occurring. They're having to evacuate thousands of Russian citizens from the area to a more safe location. And of course, I think the number is over 120,000 now that have been displaced by this current scenario, which is expected. That's how these things go, right? But one thing that always comes up every time you see a refugee situation occur like this one, something they're always lacking and they always need more of, isn't something you would necessarily consider to be related to survival per se, or something that you would find to be life-saving or whatever it is, but people are jumping in their vehicles and leaving their homes in, the, in an instant because their home's getting hit by drones or missiles or whatever it is. And once they get to their new location, what these aid relief centers are asking for in mass is blankets, clothing, and shoes, right? So while the world is still functioning to a certain degree, and these situations are occurring in a regional format, right? They're not national, they're not global, they're just in a regional environment. People are being displaced and they're leaving all of a sudden and these other areas can generally support the basic necessities of water, shelter, food, things of that nature. But what these people really need when those things are still available are things that nobody thinks to grab on their way out the door. Blankets, pillows, clothing, shoes. So consider that as part of your preparedness planning. If you were to have to evacuate suddenly, would you have those items with you for when you get set up at the next location? You might have access to food, you might have access to water, you might have access to some of those things depending on the scenario. But if you don't have blankets, you don't have pillows, you don't have shoes, you don't have additional clothes, they're not gonna be able to provide that for you very easily. So keep that in mind, okay? We can learn from these situations as they occur, as we inspect them and study them and try to understand what's happening in the world, we better be taking away lessons in the process, right? So, let me know your thoughts down below about this Kursk invasion scenario and how it's getting out of hand, because it's not that I'm over here criticizing what Ukraine is doing. What they're doing is what they feel they need to do based on their current situation. And obviously, since they were the ones who were invaded, they have every right to react in whatever form they find necessary, right? But the Western involvement, our involvement as the United States, the UK's involvement in the sense of MI6 being blamed for the coordination of these attacks, and everything else, just escalates the possibility of worldwide conflict every single time these things occur, which means you and I eventually pay the price, right? Regardless of how we feel about it, we don't get to make those decisions. So that's why this thing is getting out of hand. It's not about what they're doing, it's about what it's pulling us into, right? Anything else you need from me at all, you can go to magicprepper.com. There's a bunch of discounts and affiliate links and everything else there as well, so check that out. There's also an email list you can sign up for if you want to be involved in the community and get some newsletters from time to time. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.